I'm still looking for him. How is he? I'm not sure. He's bleeding like crazy. Oh my god! I'm not sure why anyone would decorate in white. If he doesn't call in the next two minutes, call the hospital. I'm going to have to have a cigarette, Ken. After 18 months, the hell you are. Pull yourself together. I can't believe this is happening. Oh god! Ken! Ken, the phone is ringing! Hello, Dr. Dudley? Oh, Dr. Dudley, I'm so glad it's you. Your server said that you were at the theater. Is that the doctor? I would have never bothered you, but this is an emergency. Is that the doctor? I'm Chris Gorman. My husband, Ken, and I are good friends of Charlie Brock. Is that the doctor? It's the doctor, it's the doctor. Why didn't you just say so? Well, Dr. Dudley, I'm afraid there's been an accident. I would have called my own physician, but my husband's a lawyer, and under the circumstances, he thought it would be better to have Charlie's own physician. Well, we just arrived here at Charlie's house about 10 minutes ago, and as we were getting out of our car, we suddenly heard this enormous... Oh, don't say anything. What? Don't tell him what happened. Don't tell him? Just do what I said. But what about Charlie? It's just a powder burn. I don't want him knowing. But they got the doctor out of the theater. Tell him he tripped going down the stairs. But what about the blood? It's the bullet just went through his earlobe. He's fine. I don't want him knowing but about the gunshots. I already said we were getting out of the car when we suddenly heard this enormous what? What did we, we hear? We heard. Just a minute, doctor. We heard. We heard an enormous thud. Thud? When he tripped going down the stairs. Oh, good, good, good. That's good. Dr. Dudley, I'm sorry. I was talking to my husband. Well, we suddenly heard this enormous thud. It seemed Charlie tripped going up the stairs. Down. Down the down stairs. Down the stairs, but he's all right. He's sitting up in bed. He'll call him in the morning. He's sitting up in bed. He'll call him in the morning. You! You! you. He'll call you in the morning. You're, you're very sorry you disturbed him. I'm very sorry I disturbed but you. But really, he's fine. He's really fine. Thank you. Goodbye. Where are you going? Him. Thank oh, him and say goodbye. Thank you. And goodbye, doctor. What? Uh, just a minute. Any dizziness? No, no dizziness. No, no dizziness. What? Can he move his limbs? Yes, he can move his limbs. Now get off the phone. They got him out of Phantom of the Opera. Yes, he can move everything just fine. What? Uh, any slurring of the speech? No, no slurring of the no, speech. Heaven, he'll hear it. No, no slurring of the speech. I have to get back to Charlie. Any what? Any ringing in the ears? I don't believe this. No, no ringing of the ears. Yes, a little ringing in the ears. I told you to tell him no. It sounds more believable to have ringing. Jesus. Who? His wife. Myra! Yes, Myra's here. No, 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 don't tell him that Myra's here. He'll want to speak to her. Uh, Dr. Dudley, my mistake. I thought she was here, but she wasn't. She just stepped out. She'll be back in a minute. She just stepped back. She'll be out in a minute. Yes, I will tell her to call. Okay, thank you, Dr. Dudley. Sure. Dudley, um, enjoy the show. Ken and I saw it. We loved it, especially the second Are act. Are you going to review the whole goddamn show? Oh, <laughs> Charlie's calling me. Uh, just a minute, Charlie. He sounds a lot better. I have to go. Yes, doctor, I will. Don't you ever do that to me again. You must suspect something. I didn't get his name right once. If the phone rings again, don't answer it. Then why did you tell me to answer that one? Because I thought the bullet went through his head, not through his earlobe. Fix me a double vodka. I left Charlie standing in the shower. If he drowns, you're making that call. I don't know why the phone's the first one here. We never came late once in our lives. Someone else could have dealt with all this. Oh, shit, 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 Who is it? Who is it? Okay, am I near the door? Do you see people down here? Did they go on roller skates? Shh, give me a minute to figure this out. Take your time, because I don't answer doors. I only speak to Dr. Dudley. It's got to be Lenny or Ernie or one of the others. We have to open the door. You've got arms. Reach down. I've got a bandage of Charlie. Can't you just stall him for a few minutes? His best friends are coming to his 10th anniversary. His wife isn't here. He shoots himself in the earlobe. And I'm supposed to make small talk when they come in? suicide is a criminal offense, not to mention a pretty hefty scandal. Charlie is deputy mayor. He's my best friend and my client. I've got to do something to protect him, don't I? Just play the hostess for a few minutes while I figure this out. Play the hostess? There's no food out, there's no ice in the bucket. Where's the cheese dip? Where's the help? Where is Myra? What am I supposed to do to you get back? Play charades? I'm lucky I can still speak English. Well, you're the lawyer yourself. Can't you think of something to say? The contracts? I draw legal publishing contracts. If somebody walks in that door and wants to make a deal, I can handle okay, that. Okay, all right. Take it easy. Relax. Just give me a few minutes. Put some slippers on Charlie and tell him to answer it! Relax! Drink my vodka! Why is vodka better than two pops of a cigarette? Because the other guests know that you quit smoking, and if they come in here and see smoke in the room, they'll know something's wrong! So you mean falling at their feet is going to look better? Oh my god, are you hurt?
sorry. Is there anything I can do? Just don't tell Myra this party means so much to her. Mm. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Myra. We're here, kids. They're upstairs, lady. Oh, did she tell you what happened? Some dumb bastard shoots out of his garage like a Polaris rocket and blindsides me. I got four doors on one side of my car now. How does your neck feel? Stretched out over to one side. I look like I'm a Digliani painting. Do you want a drink? I don't think I could swallow past my shoulders. Of all nights that happen. Oh, here's their gift. Steuben glass. <laughs> Someone brings them a bottle of blue, and they'll have a great gift. I could have lost the tip of my tongue. <laughs> I'd be speaking Gaelic for the rest of my life. A brand new spotless car, never touched by human hands. Bought and polished by German women in Munich. And now it looks like a war memorial. Hello? This is Leonard Gantz. Is Dr. Dudley there, please? Uh, Dr. Dudley? Yes, it is. I have a whiplash injury. I see. Well, do you know what theater he's in? Oh, God, I need cigarettes so badly. Could you? It's important. I'm at 914-421-2261. Thank you very much. Oh, I've got to settle my stomach. Is there anything to eat? Some canapes or something? Mm, gee, I don't see anything. No canapes? Well, where's the cook, Maylee? She makes great canapes. Maylee? I didn't see her. I think she's off this week. The week of their anniversary party? I think she had to go back to Japan. Her mother was sick. Mainly is Chinese. I know. Her mother was visiting Japan. Oh, I can only look up. I hope tall people are coming to this party. <laughs> hey, where's Ken? Ken keeps using the bathroom. And Charlie and Myra? They're still getting dressed. They're not ready. We had a car accident and we're still on time. Oh, my lip is getting gigantic. I don't think I have enough lipstick to cover it. No nuts or pretzels. I didn't have lunch today. Three goddamn audits with the IRS on an empty stomach. Claire, get me a Diet Coke and something to munch on, will you? Where are you going? To the John. I didn't get the chance to do that either. There's a guest powder room down here. Is it Ken using that one? No, he's using the one in the guest bedroom upstairs. Well, why is he using that one? Uh, he said he had to go back and he just right upstairs. If he had to go so bad, why didn't he just use that one? You know how it is when you have to go bad, but you just don't want to stop running. But this is a shorter run. Well, Lenny, it's not an Olympic event. Why don't you just go? That's why they build guest back. Claire, we have to talk. What is it? I'm coming apart the seams. You dressed? No, my nerves. I think I'm going to crack. Oh, I can see. Oh! Your hands are like eyes! Going on here, isn't it? Claire, you're so smart, you're so good to see things. Oh, you scatter me, Chris. Tell me, what's happening? Well, Ken and I arrived here about ten minutes ago when we suddenly heard this enormous Claire, you look lovely. Yes, I was just telling her that she looks enormously well, doesn't she? Isn't that the dress you wore for cerebral palsy? No, I got this for sickle cell. <laughs> Hi, Ken. Hi. Where's Lenny? Oh, he's in the John. Where's Charlie and Myra? They all getting dressed? Yes, I still think they're getting dressed. I heard about the new BMW. Is Len happy with it? Delirious. Oh, did he get all the features he wanted? <laughs> oh, more than he asked oh, for. Oh, congratulations. Are you coming to the bathroom? Can I have to go myself? Uh, I think Myra's in there. Then I'll use my knees bathroom. Call me she gets back from Japan. Anyway. Because we don't know the truth. Charlie is still mumbling. Now get in there. He wants to see you. See me? Why does he want to see me? He's crying like a baby and he needs a woman. To do what? To cry on. I can comfort him. I can reason with him all I want, but I can't comfort him. Can't you just get in there for two minutes for Christ's sake? Is he still bleeding because they paid twelve hundred dollars for this dress? Hi, Lenny. Oh, Jesus! Oh! <laughs> Whoa! Hi, Ken. Did you hear about the new BMW? Yeah, congratulations. Now, if you'll excuse me. Uh, where are you going? To the John? Didn't you just go? Yes, but uh, not enough. I'll, I'll be here with you. <laughs> <laughs> this is very weird. There's plenty of food in the kitchen, but nothing's cooked. Why didn't you open this first? There's a duck, roast ham, smoked turkey, all the frosting on the table. There's Sharp like a nail file or something? Chris started to tell me something and then she clammed up. The door might be on W open like tissue paper, but this, this thing is steel. Yes, Chris, hold his eyes. 
price. And she couldn't look me straight in the eye. Oh, that should be a safe place to keep your jewelry. Oh, what is taking them so long to get dressed, huh? I'll give the people a chance to come down. What are you so damn suspicious for? Oh, so you don't notice anything's wrong, huh? Uh, yeah, I noticed. I noticed that the towels are piled up on the sink instead of on the rack. Uh, I noticed there's only a sheet and a half left of toilet paper. I, I think it's sloppy, but not a scandal. Really? Well, I'm not so sure I rule out a scandal. Okay, okay. You think I don't know what you're talking about? I hear gossip, I hear rumors, and I won't listen to that crap. You understand? He is my friend, and she is the wife of my friend. Fine. Okay, then. Forget it. I don't listen to filth and garbage about my friend. I said forget it. All right, come here. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with here? Well, they could hear us there. Hear us better. We could come here. What's not good? What, heard. what did you hear? We heard voice. Why? We haven't said anything all right, yet. All right, all right. There's talk going around about my rent. Oh, God, this hurts me. Santa my other side. I can't hurt. <laughs> oh. oh. There's talk going around about Myra and Charlie, except no one will tell it to my face because they know I won't listen. I'll listen. Tell it to my face. Oh, why would you want to hear crap about one of my best friends? He's my best client. He trusts me, not just with investments and taxes, but personal things. I don't do his taxes. What's the rumors? Oh, Jesus, you won't be satisfied till you hear, will you? I won't even sleep with you until I hear. <laughs> What's the rumors? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Your friend Myra is having herself a little thing. What kind of thing? Though do I have to spell it out for you? A thing, a guy, a man, a fella, a hitch. She's doing something with someone on the sly somewhere, and it's not Charlie, see? Oh, you don't know that. You only heard it. You haven't seen well, it. Of course I haven't seen it. You think they invite me to come along? What the hell's wrong with you? You're so naive. It's incredible. Get real, Lenny. Myra's not having an affair with anybody. Your friend Charlie, however, was running up a hell of a motel bill. Charlie! My friend Charlie, no way, not a chance. He wouldn't even look at another woman. He may not be looking at her, but he's screwing her. I knew you lower your voice. <laughs> Where did you hear this? Someone at the tennis club told me. Our tennis club? What is it, a sacred temple? People gossip there. A bunch of hypocrites sit around in their brand new Nikes and Reeboks destroying people's lives. Who was the one who told you? Oh, I'm not going to tell you because you don't like this person anyway. Oh, what's the difference if I like him or not? Who told you? Carol Newman. Carol Newman! I knew it! I knew it! I hate that goddamn woman. She has got a mouth so big she could swallow a can of tennis balls. How are you guys doing? Oh, just fine, Kevin. Oh, great. Have you had anything to eat? Oh, just a plastic bag. Oh, <laughs> was it Carol Newman who spread the other rumor? What other rumor? The rumor that you and I were breaking up. No, nope. it wasn't Carol Newman. Oh, it wasn't? Then who was it? It was me. You started the rumor. <laughs> me, you, the both of us. When we were thinking of separating, didn't we go around telling everybody? Well, we told friends, but that bitch told strangers. Hey, hey, <laughs> do not call Carol Newman a bitch to my face. Besides, Carol Newman didn't spread the rumor about Charlie. Somebody else at the club told Oh, what somebody else? Harold Green. Harold Green. <laughs> Who the hell is Harold Green? <laughs> He's a new member. He was voted in last week. Well, I never voted for him. Yes, you did. By proxy, we were in Bermuda. I don't believe it. Goddamn proxy new member spreads rumors about one of my best friends. Who does he play tennis with? Oh, he doesn't play tennis. He just eats lunches there. He's a social member. Okay. Okay. So this son of a bitch <laughs> is a proxy new social member who comes to the club to eat lunches and spread rumors. What does he do for a living? He sells me a dog. Did anyone else come in? Not to speak of, no. Is anything wrong? Why? Does anything appear wrong to you? Well, you mean aside from the fact that there's no food, no guests, no host, no hostess, and that you and Chris only appear one at a time and never together? Yes, I'd say something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Claire, sit down. I can't keep this in any longer. We've got a big problem on our hands. Aha! What did I just say, Claire? You just said, aha! What is it, Ken? Can you tell us? Charlie... Charlie, um... Charlie's been shot. What? Shot? Shot? Oh my god! Uh, I can't uh, believe it! Whoa. All right, all right, all right, take it easy. He's not dead. He's all right. He's not dead? He's all right. He's alive. He's okay. Oh, thank god. He's okay. Oh, where was he shot? 
Yeah, in the head. Oh, in the head. <laughs> in the head. <laughs> oh my God, he was shot All in right, the head. Take it easy. It was a superficial move. Well, where did the bullet go? Through his earlobe. Oh, the earlobe. <laughs> That's not too bad. I have holes in my earlobe. It doesn't hurt. Oh, I, I, saw, this, I saw this coming. I swear. Oh, the truth, man. Did she do it? Who? Oh, Myra, for Christ's sakes. Who else would it be? Why would Myra shoot Charlie? Oh, so you don't know what's going on. So you haven't heard. <laughs> you don't know what's going on. Charlie's been having a hot affair. Hey, 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 hey. it's not hot. It's not hot. Nobody said it was hot. <laughs> it's an affair, a plain affair. Who told you this? Well, nobody told me that. What I heard was that Myra was the one who was having a thing. A thing with who? Man, a guy I fell in case with. Well, somebody else told me it was Charlie who was having the affair. What's someone else? Some bitch at the club named Carol Newman. <laughs> she is not a bitch. Besides, she only told me what Harold Green told her. Who's Harold Green? A goddamn proxy new social member who doesn't even play tennis. Just comes to the club to eat lunches and spread rumors. Well, it seems to me Charlie's the one who's having the affair. If Myra was hysterical enough to shoot him. Myra didn't shoot Charlie. Charlie fired a gun. I think it may have been attempted suicide. What? Suicide? Oh my god! All right, okay. All right, right take it easy. Let's not breathe it. Oh, Charlie. Hey, it's all because of that no good fucking Harold Green. That guy's out of the way. I can get the book. Can we stick to the main topic here? I don't know if it was attempted suicide. I don't know what Charlie fired the gun. So, how is Myra taking this? Oh my god, she must be a wreck. I should go up to her. Let me go up to her. Don't bother. She's not here. She's gone. She's gone? Charlie shoots himself in the head and Myra leaves the house? She walks out on him now. Now when he's laying up there with a bullet in his ear. No, the, the bullet didn't go in his ear when through. Will you listen to me, please? I didn't even know if Myra was here to begin with. I was just driving here with Chris when we heard a, uh, an enormous thud. We went to the front door and it was locked, so we went around to the kitchen and broke it through the window. Yeah, I saw that. I thought maybe May Lee did it and Myra fired her, but I didn't know then that May Lee's mother was sick in Japan. You, you just don't, don't talk for a while. <laughs> 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 you So you broke in and you rushed upstairs. Was he on the floor? Uh, no. He was sitting up in bed. The television was on. Um, one of those evangelist shows. There was a bottle of Valium on the nightstand. I figure he took a few pills, held the gun to his head, and accidentally fired it off. Is that blood on your shirt, Ken? Where? Below the second stud. Oh, shit, that won't come out, will it? That's what you're worried about, a stain on your dress shirt. I don't care about my dress shirt. I'm more concerned with giving Charlie a suicide rap. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to explain to the other guests why there's blood on my good silly shirt. You could borrow one of Charlie's. These two sizes too big for me. I don't think anybody's going to notice your cuffs when Charlie has a big bandage on his ear and Myra's not even at the party. Let the man finish the story, will you? Did he say anything? Did he say why he did it? Not a word. He was barely conscious. Did he leave a note or anything? There was a piece of paper, but he tore it up and threw it down the john before I could get to it. Well, this is not happening. I'm not hearing this. Did you call the police? No, I didn't want to make this thing public before we knew what happened. Well, we have got to call the police. This man is the deputy mayor of New York. We are talking front page of the New York Times. Pictures of Charlie with his suit jacket over his head. That is exactly what I'm trying to avoid until we hear the whole story. Oh, if we keep this quiet, we're all accessories. I work with the IRS boys. I'd be the first they go after. Now, why would they go after you? Oh, with attempted suicides, they want to open up everything. His books, his portfolio, his entire financial picture. They'd want to know why a deputy mayor could afford a nice place like this. Well, that's no secret. Myra's a wealthy woman. She bought the house. She did? Well, I didn't know that. Oh, great. You hear that? Now, tomorrow it'll be all over the tennis club. I'm not breaking this up the police until I know what happened. I don't know why you're so nervous. You wouldn't want the IRS knowing unless you have something to hide. Are you accusing me of hiding something? I'm the one who wants to bring in the police. Maybe you're the one who has something to hide. You make out his contracts. You made out his will. Are you accusing me and Charlie of conspiracy to defraud the city? I hear a car pulling out! If you're not calling the police, I am. Oh, no, you're not! You're telling me what I'm not going to do. It's pulling out the driveway! I suppose the neighbors heard the gunshot and have already called the police. I'll deal with the problem as it arises. Well, suppose the car is the police. Then the problem has... A rose in. It's a Volvo station wagon. Volvo. Oh, so now I'm sure you're worried about the Swedish police. It's Ernie and Cookie. Ernie and Cookie. Well, why do you just say so? I need to listen. Ken, Myra and I are having trouble with her zipper. No, you're not. I'm not? 
They know. About Myra's zipper? No, we know Myra's not here, Ken told us. Oh. Oh, they stopped to look at our BMW. Are you talking about Charlie cutting his ear shaving? They know everything. The gunshot, the earlobe, the torn piece of paper, everything. Why didn't you tell me? You told them they must think I'm an idiot. Uh, how is Charlie? He fell asleep. He's hugging his pillow with his thumb in his mouth. Oh, they're coming up to the house! Oh. She's wearing a dress like that to a party like this. So what do we do? Do we tell him? Oh, why not? Ernie is Charlie's analyst, and everything you tell the analyst remains confidential. His patience. What his patience, Stella? We're not his patience. His patient is asleep, stuck in his thumb. I can't believe I'm paying a babysitter for this night. So what did we decide? Do we call the police or not? I say no. Cookie has her own cooking show on television. Suppose she accidentally says something on the air. On a cooking show? What do you think she gives out? Suicide recipes? <laughs> I still think we say nothing. It's better safe than sorry. Claire, go open the door. Chris, get us some drinks. Let's look like we're having fun. So, what is it? We're telling Ernie, but we're not telling Cookie? We are not telling either of them. I'm sorry we told you. <laughs> Just open the door. Don't wait, Claire. Don't open the door until I get to the top of the stairs. Maybe I can see what happened to Charlie. Well, I took the volume away from him. I hid it in the medicine cabinet. Oh, gee, what a good hiding spot. <laughs> so Mrs. Thatcher replies, I don't know. Perhaps it's in my umbrella stand. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes, we're ready. Over the summer. 
celebrate their 10th anniversary, they weren't going to have any servants. Uh-huh. No help. No anybody. Just us. Uh-huh. Uh, no help anybody. That's just us. Isn't that terrific? Why is that terrific? Because we're all going to pitch in like in the old days before money, before success. Like when we were all just starting out. Those were the best times of our lives, don't you think? No, I hated those times. I love success. But don't you find these are greedier times, lazier or more selfish? Nobody wants to work anymore. I work 14 hours a day. I cook 37 meals a week. I cook at my cooking show. I cook for my neighbors. I cook for my family. I cook for my dogs. I was looking forward to having a relaxed evening. But I don't want to spoil the fun. Now, what do we have to do? We have to cook. <laughs> you mean all of us cooking in the kitchen together? Everyone except Charlene Myra, Claire, and I told them to stay up there and relax, and we'll just call them when we're ready. Uh, what are we going to make? Oh, it's all laid out. Roast ham, spout turkey, duck, and pasta. Roast ham and duck, that's too much for us to open. Darling, we didn't come here to live longer just to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everyone getting so worked up about this? All right, Ernie, let's not turn this into group therapy, please. <laughs> this is nothing like group therapy, Claire. You, of all people, should know. Oh, terrific, Ernie. Let's just name all the people in your Thursday night group, huh? Why are Ernie and I being attacked? We just walked in the door. Please, what are your voices? We wouldn't want to spoil the surprise for Charlie and Myra. What surprise? It was their idea. Listen, I don't want to take the blame for ruining this time. I'll do all the cooking and Ernie will do the serving. Um, honey, you don't have to do that. Oh, oh she let wants her do to. It. Let's do it. Hey, 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 if it makes her happy, she can clean up too. <laughs> Just give me 45 minutes, and I promise this is going to be the best dinner party we've ever had. Oh my god! Oh, give me a break. It's fine, it's okay, it's under control. I. Bernie! Cookie! Chris, could you come up here for a minute? It's important. <laughs> what are you all excusing for a minute? I crazy? Oh, is that a gunshot? A gunshot? No, no, that was a car backfiring in Charlie's bedroom. Ernie, maybe you should go up and see. Oh, why? Chris and Ken and Charlie and Myra are all up there. There's more of them than us. You can't just ignore a gunshot. Ernie, please go up and oh, see. Oh, oh, I know. I know exactly <laughs> what it was. It was a balloon. Yes, yes. Yes! They have been blowing up. Party balloons up there all day, so. What kind of balloon would that be? Good ear balloon? Oh, <laughs> uh, then how are we going to get dinner ready? Charlie and Myra must be stark. Why don't you and Cookie get started? I'll have a wine spritz for And Claire, put on some music, will you? Let me know if Dr. Doolittle calls back. Oh, I'm ready. Still think that was a gunshot. Uh, let's get dinner started, Erna. Help me up, please. Hello? Who? Dr. Cusack? <laughs> Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> Who is it, please? Is that for me? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's a conference call. Miss and Mrs. Klein, Miss and Mrs. Platt, Miss and Mrs. Fishman. Oh, it's my Friday night. I'll have a telephone question. Go on, honey. I can get up myself. He's coming, folks. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> no, my husband just called. <laughs> on the phone. Dr. Dudley's service. Oh my god, what is that? <laughs> it's cooking. It's all right, I do this all the time. It takes the pressure off my back. Where's Ernie? In there. We've got a session with his Friday night group. And they're all in the kitchen? No, on the telephone. <laughs> You're back again? No, little skirt pants on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she must be so much fun to live with. <laughs> so what happened upstairs? Is Charlie all right? Yeah, he's sleeping. Ken went to hide the gun in the closet so Charlie couldn't get it again, but he tripped over Charlie's slippers. A gun went off next to his head and he can't hear a thing in both ears. Ken or Charlie? Ken, Charlie's out cold from the Valium. They already hung up. I already took the message. And you couldn't tell me that while I was on the balcony. What did they say? They said Dr. Dudley already called this number and he doesn't want to be called out of the theater again. That is it. I am getting a new doctor. I am not leaving my life in the hands of the drama critic from the Mount Sinai Hospital. Hello, this is Leonard Gantz. Again, Dr. Dudley did not call this number. Please have him call me back. It is important. 
So, what did Ken want Chris upstairs for? To call Ken's doctor to see what to do about his ears. He wouldn't be able to hear what the doctor was saying, so I gotta get back upstairs. You mean she told the doctor her gun went off? Then she'll have to explain about Charlie. No, she was going to say he was outside and a manhole cover blew up next to his head. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, but the service said he was still in the theater. Must be some kind of flu going around Broadway. <laughs> They purposely wait till I get to the top of the stairs. Answer that for me, will you? This is all getting too hard to follow. I need a bookmark in my head or something. Hello? Oh, Dr. Dudley, thanks for calling back. You want to speak to Oh, him? no, I'm taking a stress test. <laughs> you know, if Ernie can't figure out something's wrong here, I'm not going to his group anymore. Hello, Dr. Dudley? Yeah, thanks for calling back. So about 20 minutes ago, some idiot nailed me in my BMW. Charlie. Charlie Brock? Well, no, I'm not calling about Charlie. Why? I see. Dr. Dudley is Charlie's doctor, too. Yes, he's doing better. He's getting his rest. Chris. You know Ken and Chris. Well, yes, I think she did call here. He's Ken's doctor, too. Maybe he has a franchise. Oh, he's busy. Put on some music or something. Dr. Dudley, a cold compress? Great idea. Hold on, let me connect you to Chris. Uh, which button goes to Charlie's room? Why? Who's going to hear it up there? You are a pain in the ass. Dr. Dudley? Yes, my wife has a pain too. Oh no, it's no bother. Hold for Chris, please. We owe this guy a gift. Let's give him Cookie as a patient. <laughs> See where Ernie is with my spritz, will you? I thought I heard Lenny in here. Have a spritzer? I'll hold it for him. <laughs> Let me see what that I'll sound was. The gunshot? It was a gunshot. Uh, no, I was referring to the sound you thought was a gunshot. <laughs> it wasn't a balloon, I know that. No, it was a, a can of shaving cream. It exploded. Shaving cream exploded. It's all right, it washes off. Incredible. Ernie, I need you to put out some garbage. I'm not even talking to my group yet. They're fighting with each other. I put them on hold. It'll clear up in a minute. These things don't last long. You think this will last long? Lay down in the guest room for a while, Ken. You'll feel better. I have an idea. I'll lay down in the guest room for oh, a little while. Right, right. <laughs> so what did the doctor say to Chris? Uh, he referred her to another doctor. He's not feeling well. Mm -hmm. My neck is killing me again. See where Ernie is with my spritzer. Your sister's here? No, Ken, my spritzer! If your sister's here, make sure you don't tell her about Charlie until we hear the full story! <laughs> I've got a problem, Claire. Can you help me? Ernie and I'll do the kitchen and throw out some garbage bags and the door's locked. My hands are full of grease. Can you let him back in? Oh, well, of course. We would all miss him terribly. <laughs> went around so you wouldn't have to open the door. Oh, hi. Where's Claire? She went out in the kitchen to let Ernie in. Oh, okay. Oh, there you are. Cookie, the water's boiling over on the pasta. Why did you turn down? I don't know. I don't watch a show. Well, I'll get it. <laughs> you get this with a bag of ice. I'm melting. I'm getting to feel like one of my patients. Oh god, I'd smoke a Havana cigar if I had one. I'm getting hives underneath my arms. Did you hear about Ken? He's deaf. He's better off. He's out of this thing now. Why are we protecting Charlie in this way? Ken is deaf and Lenny can't move his neck. Cookie is walking like a giraffe. I'm getting a blood condition. For what? One more gunshot the whole world's gonna know anyway. Oh, the whole world isn't interested. Paraguay and Bolivia don't give a rat's ass. Hey, there is a car coming up the driveway. Was anyone else invited? Well, oh, Harry and Joan, but they canceled. They went to Venezuela. They said they called to me. From Venezuela? Jeez. Maybe they will care about in Bolivia. So who is going to the driveway? <laughs> maybe it's Myra. Maybe she came back. No, Myra drives a Porsche. This is an Audi. Ask Ken. He might know. Yeah, Ken is reading lips right now. I doubt he can pick up on Audi. <laughs> what the hell was that? Cookie, just move the microwave. What else? Okay, Chris, go see what happened in the kitchen. Claire, go see who's coming up the driveway. I'll go check on Ken and Charlie. I feel like I'm at the fucking elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Burn my fingers! Ah, hot, 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 hot. Oh dear. Son of a gun, that hurts. Ugh. Oh, what happened? 
Cookie dropped her ice bag and slipped up against the stove. The hot platter was about to fall on her, so I lifted it up. Then I dropped it on the table, and the glass shattered on her arm, and she's bleeding like hell. Ugh. I put some dish towels on her wrist, and I propped her up against the counter. Ugh. But now I need some bandages for her arm and some ointment for my fingers. I never saw anything happen so fast. Well, I can't believe that. He is in pain and said all that without missing a word. Get the bandages. Why are you still saying that? Well, I was hoping there was more to the story. <laughs> I'm sorry, Claire. Did you ask for a drink? Listen, you have other things to think about. Right. Ugh. You know what the sign is beginning to remind me of? What, too? There's the car door. I don't even want to know who it is. Why don't you go and look? Oh, like it's going to be good news, right? It's Glenn and Cassie. Glenn and Cassie Cooper together? That's how they're walking. I heard they were having trouble. <laughs> oh, not walking. Jesus, did you know that Glenn is running for state senate in Poughkeepsie? So? That's all he needs is to walk in here and be a part of a hushed up suicide attempt. He can kiss his career goodbye. Maybe Ken will figure this all out before they ring the doorbell. Well, it's going to be a tough campaign. <laughs> Wait a minute. I haven't gone since I got here. Yes, you did in May Lee's room. Yes, but no one was at the door then. How the hell did it? somebody else look at the door? Come on. Isn't anyone going to get the door? Are you talking to me? Not you, Ken. Put the towel back on your ears. Chris? Claire? Where are you? Screw it. I'm beginning to feel like my car. Huh. Uh, Lenny, have you got those bandages? <coughs> Nobody getting that door. These kids are up to something, I know it. Hello? Good evening. Good evening. I don't know where everybody is. You mean we're the first? Oh, no. Everyone's here. They're just spread out. Can I have a drink, please? Double scotch. Tray up. Perry, it was mine. No ice. <laughs> sure. Fine. I don't believe you've met. I'm Ernie Cusa. Hello, Ernie. <laughs> Excuse my hand. A little accident in the kitchen. Sorry to hear it. I would stay in chat, but my wife is bleeding in the kitchen. Your wife? Cookie. Water pitcher broke, cut her arm, and burnt my fingers. That's a shame. Nothing to worry about. Dinner will be ready soon. Nice meeting you both. I wonder why they're not using the Chinese girl. Do I look all right? Yes, fine. I feel so frumpy. God, you look beautiful. Is my hair all right? I saw you looking at it in the car. No, I wasn't. What were you looking at then? A robe, I suppose. I can always tell when you hate what I'm wearing. <laughs> I love that dress. I always have. This is the first time I'm wearing it. I always <laughs> have admired your taste. It's what I meant. I can never please you sometimes. What did I say? It's what you don't say that drives me crazy. What I don't say? How can you drive me crazy if I don't say it? I don't know. <laughs> it's the looks that you give me. I wasn't giving you any looks. You look at me all the time. Because you're always asking me to look at you. Well, it'd be nice if I didn't have to ask you, wouldn't it? Well, it'd be nice if you need to look, which would make it unnecessary to ask. I can never get any support from you. You have time for everything and everyone else. When it comes to me, I have to draw blood to get your attention when I walk in a room. We walked in a room together. Oh. It was already done. Cassie, oh. please don't start. We're 45 minutes late as it is. I don't want a room to say for Charlie and Myra. We're 45 minutes late because you decided to scowl at every dress I tried on. I didn't scowl, I smiled. You always think my smile's like a scowl. You think my grin looks like a frown. You think my frown looks like a yawn. Don't sneer at me. It wasn't a sneer, it was a pee. Oh, this conversation is so banal. I can't even believe what I'm saying. We sound like a fucking TV couple. Oh, now we're getting language right. Oh, no, Mr. Perfect, because I don't want to risk a scowl, a frown, a snarl, or pee. God forbid I show a sign of human imperfection and I wake up with divorce papers in my hand. What is this thing that you're divorced? Where does it even come from? I don't look at you sometimes because I'm afraid you're not going to look looking at you. I don't know what the hell you want from me, Glenn. I really don't. I don't want anything from you. I mean, I would like it to be the way we were, from the way we are. God, you suffocate me sometimes! I want to go home! Go home? We just got here. We haven't even seen anyone yet. I don't know how I'm going to get through this night. Jesus, they're your friends. They probably already know what's happening. Nothing is happening. Don't you fucking lie to me! The whole goddamn city knows about you and that cheap little chippy bimbo! Will you keep it down? Nothing is going on. I hardly know the woman. She's on the Democratic Fundraising Committee. 
I met her and her husband at two cocktail parties, for God's sake. Two cocktail parties, huh? Yes, two cocktail parties. You think I'm stupid? No. You think I'm blind? No. You think I don't see what's going on? Yes, because you don't. Are you listening to me, Glenn? Because I'm about to tell you something. Don't you see my ears perking up? I've known about you and Carol Newman for a year now! Crazy! Since I met her four months ago! <laughs> about you and your little bimbo. What do I care about the mess they have? Oh, it's going to eat you, Cassie. Do my own conditions fall oh. out? Are you threatened somehow? Because I'm right for the second. State Senate. State Senate. Don't act like we're going to Washington. We're going to Albany. 21 degrees below zero in the middle of winter, Albany. Oh, and that boy, oh, man boy, here. oh, yeah, boy. Hey, what was that? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, that's right, because I'm the shrewd witch wife giving you such a hard time. Well, guess what? People are talking. Trust me, kiddo. What do you mean? You haven't said anything to anyone, have you? Oh, is that what you care about? Your career, your reputation, your place in American history? Well, you know what your place in American history is going to be? A commemorative stamp of you and that little bimbo in a motel together! You're so hard to say, Cassie. Your eye is controlled. You've been wearing a course of something, haven't you? I told you from that way. It's dangerous. It's like petrified cocaine. Cassie, don't take it out. Your crazy. Get away. Don't try to see what you're doing. And don't let my friends see what you're doing. Glenn, Cassie. I thought it was you. How are you doing? I'm feeling better, thanks. Not you, Ken. It's Glenn and Cassie. They're fine, just great. Hi, Glenn. Cassie's fine. Cassie. Leonard. Did it suddenly freeze up out there? Freeze up? Well, isn't that an icicle Cassie's got there? No, it's a quartz crystal. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, where's Chris and Claire? Did someone else come in? It's Glenn and Cassie, Ken. I told you that already. It's Ken. Here's what stuffed up. Fat cold. Uh, who let you in? The butler. The butler? The butler is here. He's getting his drinks. Is, is he alone? No, Chris with him. May we? Oh, oh, really? oh. What a relief they are back. We have been without help here for a while. Really? Where's Charlie and Myra? Charlie and Lyra. <clears throat> well, I suppose they're in their room. Lady, let, lady, my towel fell off. I'll get you a new towel, Ken. I gotta get the bandages first. Excuse me, kids. I gotta get some bandages. <laughs> Charlie, Myra, you mind if I come in? Sure, come on in. <laughs> lady, lady. Who is that? Is that Glenn? Is that Glenn? Yes, and Cassie. We hear you have a cold. You think I look old? <laughs> well, I haven't been sleeping much recently. Has anyone else seen you come in? Yes, we just saw Lenny. Have you seen Lenny? Yes, he went into Charlie's room. I I'm so I can't hear you very well. A manhole cover blew up next to my ears. That's terrible. I said a manhole cover <laughs> blew up next to my ears. Yes, I hear you. I I'm sorry, I can't hear you very well. Has anyone gotten you anything to drink? Yes, the butler. I'm sorry, or help us somewhere off in the Orient. I think he's gone dotty. Yes, a hot toddy would be great. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go check on Charlie and Myra. Uh, Myra, can I come in? Oh, sure, come on in. <laughs> I'll be right back. Where are you going? To rinse off my crystal. I'm sure you'd like to make a phone call while I'm gone, huh? Anyone in there? Uh, who is it? Cassie, who's that? And the butler may leave. You saw me leave the butler? My god, I must have been in there for a long time. Are you through in there? Me? Yes, sure. You left it locked. Who is it? Cassie, <laughs> who's that? Claire! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Cassie. Hi, Glenn. Oh, don't you look beautiful? Where are the boys? Well, let me hang out with Charlie and Myra. Myra sounded very excited. You spoke to Myra? No, I just heard her talk to Peggy Lang. Oh, I love a copy of that conversation. Are you through in there because I have to go? My feet and the butler are here. Are you kidding? Where's the 
Make a cookie. I'll use my Ernie. Do you need the butler? Oh, no. Okay, we got that one cleared up. And they're just back from the Orient. I imagine so. You're so well informed. Why is everyone up in Charlie's room? Oh, um, there was something on the TV they all wanted to watch tonight. Very good, Chris. Oh, now this is beginning to look like a party. What were y'all watching up there? Oh, where? On TV. The thing you went upstairs to watch with Ken and Charlie and Myra. Oh, yes, yes, the thing, that show, that uh, PBS special on, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Hitler? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the PBS special on Hitler. <laughs> Sure, 
I'd love to go home. My Joe's connection is bad. I think I'm losing you. Cassie, will you hurry up? Look at my connection. Come on, will you? It's Damon, everyone! Who did that? Who banged on the bathroom door? I did. Your cousin Joe is on the phone for his way, love. You scared the shit out of me! You made me drop my two million year old crystal in the toilet! I can't take this for you. Take it. You can't hear anyway. What's the difference? So just stand there, idiot! Go down there and get my crystal! Hey, just cool it, Cassie, okay? Go get my red shirt. No, 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 no. I'll get them. My red shirt! Thank <laughs> you. 
You're right. My God, he's right. We've all been so busy eating and explaining to each other, we forgot all about Charlie. Yes, yes, that's exactly what I've been saying. All right, all right, I'll go up and settle this now. Wait, wait, we are all in a precarious situation. Not only Charlie, but a lot of people's futures depend on how we deal with this issue. Me and you? Well, no. Cassie and last was right. We just heard about it. We're hardly involved. And Ernie and I were cooking the whole time. Nobody told us. Uh, sorry. I wanted to call the police. Ken wouldn't let me call the police. Claire, Claire, did I want to call the police? Lenny wanted to call the police. So what are you saying? That this is Ken's responsibility? That he takes the rap for all this? No. 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 What, what you're saying is, if it comes down to it, he's the most logical. That's all. I can't believe this. Ken almost went deaf trying to protect Charlie and everybody else here. I expected a little bit more from his friends. My God, what a bunch of wimps. Have you heard any of this, Ken? Well, Glenn, are you going to answer, have you? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, Christ, no, Mama. Oh, what is it? I lost my earrings, my good earrings, my grandmother's earrings. Where'd you lose them? Right here, right around here. We'll find them. What did they look like? Old, very old. The little ruby. My grandmother gave them to me. I'm sick about this. <laughs> what? They're in my hand. <laughs> I forgot I had them. I'm so stupid. I'm sorry. Yeah, forgive me. What were we talking about again? Lana, we're still pretty fine. Are you sure she's in <laughs> Oh, she's fine. She's probably <clears throat> just in there trying to find the other ways to get back at me. She'll come up with something. Yeah, she's got them. I just wanted to apologize to everyone for my behavior. I know I was behaving badly tonight. I had a rough day and I'm just not here tonight. Oh, that's okay. Neither are Charlie and Larry. <laughs> funny. That's truly funny, Lenny. I can never think of anything funny like that. How do you do well, that? Well, I don't know. I usually... Yeah. Uh, can I get you a glass of wine? <laughs> Does it look like I need one? Well, she's trying to get back at Glenn. You or me? All right, Cassie, cut it out. You know what I mean. Now put your hair back up and sit on a chair. Do you know what he means, Len? Oh, excuse me. I'm going up to get Charlie's gun. Oh. <laughs> 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 and I go out on the terrace and have a nice, quiet conversation. You do that. You have a back worse than mine. Oh, I see what you're thinking. That's fascinating. Because the exact same thing happened to Glenn and I just last week at the Democratic Fundraising Committee. Oh, there was this woman there. Very kind, very attractive, very, um, mm -hmm, refined. And because I'm just so silly and so insecure, I assumed she was coming on to Glenn. Why, when they got up to dance, they were as close as freshly laid wallpaper. All right, Cassie, I think we're going. Uh, Excuse me, I think I ate too quickly. Uh, that was the intercom, Ken, <laughs> not <you. laughs> Charlie, are you all right? It's Charlie. Molly? Who the hell is Molly? Charlie, Charlie, not Molly. Yes, yes, Charlie, we're all here. Len, Glenn, Ken, Ernie, Claire, Chris, Cassie, and Cookie. Isn't that odd how all the women's names begin with a C? That's right, except Myra. Her middle name is Clara. <coughs> all the men's names are the same. Ken, Glenn, and Len? That's right. Except Ernie and Charlie. Charlie begins with a C. What is this? Anagrams for Pete's sake? Let the man speak on the phone. Good. Good. Yes, yes, Charlie, we understand. No, it's, it's perfectly reasonable. Do what you need to do. We'll be here. He needs time to think. More time to drink. The man is on Valium. I don't think now's the time to be drinking. Think, think, not drink! Oh my God. What, what is it? Oh, jeez, my ears just opened up. Oh, it's like a subway here. This is remarkable, but I think I'm having the first headache I've had in my life. I just remembered. What? Ernie's last name is Cusack. That begins with a C. You just <laughs> remembered your husband's last name? I can hear my own pulse. It's slightly up, but not too bad. Oh, I can take it, Ken. I'm very good at things like that. I'm warning you, Cassie. You're going to have to be in a safe place where your crystal is. Don't threaten me, sweetheart, or I'll start naming names. That's it. That's it. I have to say about paying you a taxi. Never mind. I'll walk. Walk. 22 miles. Cassie, wait for me. Will you wait? Oh, I feel badly for her. Especially because one day she'll go old and die. <laughs> <laughs> I tell something else. Glenn, what's a pill? Sit on it, will you, honey? If I had you all in one group, I would never need another group again. Shh! 
<laughs> I hear something. I hear what? It's Glenny Cassie. I swear I can hear them talking in the driveway. The man is a German shepherd. I don't think it's your business to listen. Hey, hey, hey. If he can hear through walls, it's his business. Uh, something about a woman? She seems very upset. I'll say. She, she just hit a car door with her foot. I'm going to be enough. No, oh, shit. The good side, too, I bet. I just figured it out. I know what she's going to say. Hen, Glenn, and Len. Uh oh. Men. No, 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 no. It's not. <laughs> Len is the one that Myra's having an affair with. You think so? Figured it out. Myra's been working very hard on Glenn's campaign. Two or three nights a week, late nights. Of course. Charlie's not done. He puts two and two together. Confronts Myra with it. She confesses Charlie gets Myra out of the house, tells all the servants to go home, and tries to blow his brains out. You don't know that. That is an assumption on your part. That is a very, very dangerous statement to make. Don't you agree with me, Len? No. <laughs> Why not? I don't feel like it. <laughs> I just think we have to bring this thing to a head. I'm going up to Charlie and asking him what's what. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it. As far as Charlie's concerned, Chris and I are the only ones that know that he put a bullet through his earlobe. Right, he didn't say a word to me. He had the pillow covering his ear the whole time. So what you're saying is he doesn't know me or anything. Well, you've got to know that Myra isn't here and that there's no servants. Exactly, but he doesn't think that the rest of you know. Slower, go slower, talk like we're children. My point is, Charlie told me not to tell anybody. And then you went ahead and told everybody. No, 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 I told you and Lenny. Lenny told everybody. Oh, but you were deaf then. You didn't hear me telling everybody. And then uh -huh. you told everybody after Lenny oh, told everybody. Yeah, Mark, go fast again. It doesn't make me different. What I'm trying to say is as long as Charlie doesn't think the rest of you know. Why tell him now? I see your point. We've got to keep up the subterfuge. If we confront him with knowing about the gunshot, he could go to pieces. So until he tells us his own story, we've got to pretend we don't know anything. I'll be the one to go up to him. I tell him, hey, Charlie, everyone's here. He asks me, does anyone know what happened? You say no. I say no, and he says, well, if I'm up here, and Myra's not here, and the help isn't here, what did I tell him? Something's wrong with Cassie. Whoops. Whoops, oh, whoops, whoops. Did she throw up in my car? She hit Glenn. His nose is bleeding. Oh, oh tell me when he hits the back. I love him so much. <laughs> myself think, oh, what was he saying? You said I should be the one who goes up. I tell Charlie that everybody's here. Then Charlie asks everybody here, now what's happened? Ernie said you say no. You said I say no. Then Charlie asked me, well, I'm not down there. All right, all right, all right, all right. I've got it. I've got it. Charlie's going to want to know what Ken told us. Ken told Charlie and told us that he had a large man in Wharton with his face this morning. Myra's mother broke her hip, and she's staying the night at the hospital. The help, thinking the party was off, left the food behind. We got here, we understood, and we decided to cook dinner for ourselves. That's the story. Eh, I wouldn't believe the part about the mother breaking her hip. Why not? She died six years ago. <laughs> then her father broke his hip. Her father lives in California. Does she have a relative in the city? She has a cousin, Florence. Then Florence broke her hip. No, Florence is married, right in the room take her. Then Myra broke her hip, and the neighbors took her. If he only had a wart removed, a Charlie could have taken her. Oh, can't you think of something else? I did. I thought of the mother, the father, the wart, the hip. Nothing satisfies the people. There's no logic to it. Nothing in that story is plausible. We don't need it plausible. The man is in shock, emo emotional anguish, mental despair. We don't, logic doesn't mean shit to him right now. Excuse my language. It's a telephone. Oh, don't you think we know? It's a phone. We all have phones here. We're all wealthy people. Hello? Yes. May I know who's calling me? Right. It's a woman for Glenn. So? It sounded like Myra. Oh, fuck a doodle doo. <laughs> Did I go get him? No, wait a minute. Hello? Glenn is outside just now. All right. I don't know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Well, what did she say when you asked to call? She said just a friend. Well, how did she say it? She said just a friend. How many ways are there to say it? Well, I'll tell you how many ways. Nervous, phony, sincere. Scared, or... guilty, lying, offended, complex, deceitful, ominous, anonymous. This isn't Scrabble, for God's sake. All right, let me talk to her. She didn't ask, well, she didn't ask for you either. I know Myra's voice. Give me the phone. Hello? No, it isn't. No, this is Glenn's friend, Len. No, Ken is getting Glenn. You sound awfully familiar, do I know you? 
I say welcome to the place? Yeah, I don't think it's her. Well, who does it sound like? Uh, Meryl Street. Meryl Street? What did Meryl Street called here? No, 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 I didn't say it was Meryl Street, but you know how she sounds in the movies like she does a character perfectly, but it's not really her? That's how she sounds. Right, it's not Meryl Street. Now we're playing Trivial Pursuit. This isn't a game show. <laughs> Ken, will you please go get Glenn? Hello? Yes, somebody wants to go get Glenn. She hung up. She must have gotten suspicious. I hear something again. Oh, I'll bet it's a Concord landing in London. It's a car pulling up the driveway. It's my car. Maybe a Terry and Joan from Venezuela. We got trouble. Oh, God, we got trouble. What is it? The police. It's a police car. OK. I warned you. I told you we should have called the police. Now, look what's happened. The police came. Oh, and I wonder who could have called the police. Maybe it was my car. Maybe it was Charlie. Maybe it was Cassie. You guys were fighting out there, weren't you? Did you use the phone in my car? Not to call. She hit me with it. She broke my phone. My new phone in my new car. Well, everybody calm down. We've got to figure out what to say when they come in. Well, they're trying to talk to Cassie. She broke down the windows. My windows. They're going to bust my windows. I'm going to have to take my car home in the night of Why would you leave her out there in the car? She didn't know who to answer police questions. If you guys did you just smash my nose. God damn, I got blood on my shirt. Oh, and you're running for state senate? I wouldn't let you run for Chinese food. What is wrong with this? <laughs> I'm going to speak to a child at home who hates better than oh, me. Oh, fine, fine. Then get him here and tell him to talk to the hey, police. Hey, hey, take it easy, lad. Chris has been doing her share. She's the one who called Dr. Dudley. Everybody called Dr. Dudley. He's on the yellow pages in China. Maybe Dudley called the police. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes, man, I know who's calling you, please. Glenn, it's the same woman for you. What same woman? Oh, she wouldn't say. Maybe it was Myra, maybe it was Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep? <laughs> oh, yeah, you know how she sounds in her movies, how she always does the character perfectly, but it's not really good. That's how this person sounded. Well, we got two policemen coming up the driveway, and she's giving us a resume of the party. Uh oh, they're walking over here. Hello? They're on the way over. Oh, hi, how are you? No, it's not cold. It's a telephone injury. Okay, the thing we can't do is let them know about Charlie. We can't have them going up or down the stairs. I tried talking to Cassie, but she's very upset. Sorry, I've got it. Above all else, no false statements. We've got to keep within the law. This, above all. Agreed? Ah, uh, yes. To thine own self to be true. Run in the hearts of better men. Are you fucking crazy? They are right <laughs> beside the door. Of course I think you should talk to her. If I can't get her in the car. Oh, the gunshots. What are we going to say about the gunshots? I'll call you back in 15 minutes. Do you have the 914 number? Or kill. Somebody kill. Just choke him with the telephone. <laughs> I'm very serious about this, but I'm not going to be able to hold my water. I've got it. You tell them we've never heard the gunshots. Oh, you mean lie to them? What happened to this? Blah, blah, blah. It won't work this time. Maybe another time. If you let me go now, I promise I'll come back. Listen, I know you're a good friend, and I thank you for all your wonderful support. Let's leave him. Let's run for our lives and leave this schmuck for the cops. <laughs> I'll call you back later. I will. Okay, goodbye. So what's going on? Well, about six weeks ago, we received an invitation to Lenny, party. stop it. <laughs> <laughs> think, think. Why didn't we hear the gunshots? We're all dead people. We meet here once a week, and that's why we did not hear the doorbell ring. Well, now you know why they call her Cookie. I've got it. We were listening to the Hitler program, King for Bonnie. We couldn't hear anything else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Except there was no Hitler program. We made the fucking thing up to fool this asshole. <laughs> 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 Bang! Bang! There you go, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it against the law 
to impersonate another real person? Yes, it is, honey, but not if you do it well. And we could actually marry these men? This is a major <laughs> felony we're talking about here. Do you want to spend 30 years in a maximum security prison in a tuxedo? Then we're all in this together. All right, here's how we do it. Each guy puts out one or two fingers. If three guys put out the same finger and one puts out a different one, that's Charlie. Are we ready? Who made you Doc Corleone? Do you have any better ideas? Yeah, let the women wrestle for it. Oh. <laughs> for Christ's sakes. All right, are we ready? One, two, three. Two and two, no good. Try again. Ready? One, two, three. All the same. One more time. Ready? One, two, three. What do you mean, Lenny? You have two fingers up. You have one finger. Bullshit, I have two stuck together. I got duck grease on my hands. It was too much for me. One finger, I saw it. And I bet right away from John Hopkins. Seriously, don't put down like they call you. No, I meant just to come out as Charlie. Claire, put on the mission. Everybody get your partners. Tell me 
who owns the BMW outside? Oh, it's my husband's car. And what is his name, please? You don't have to answer that, Claire. His name is Len. Leonard Gans. And where is Mr. Gans now? Don't object! I ain't a judge! <laughs> this ain't a court! I don't have a gavel. I just want to know where this man is. Well, we're not going to tell you where Mr. Gans is until you tell us what this is all about. Oh, I understand why I always have trouble in this neighborhood. Okay. At approximately 8.15 tonight, on 12th and Danbury, an auto accident occurred. A brand new red 1990 Porsche convertible with New York license plates smashed into the side of a brand new BMW four-door sedan. Now, we know it wasn't the BMW's fault, because the Porsche was a stolen car. Stolen right off the dealer's lot at 8.15 tonight. The man and the Porsche got away. Now, do you know who that brand new Porsche belonged to? How would I know? It belonged to Deputy Mayor Charles M. Brock, purchased today as a wedding gift from his wife Myra, a surprise wedding anniversary gift. Surprise hardly says it. <laughs> uh huh. So you're here to investigate an automotive accident. That's right. Now, if Mr. Gans is here, I'd like to speak to him. And if he's not here, the police department would like to know where he is. Could you just give us one moment, officer? Why? Uh, Mrs. Gans is my client. I'd like to consult with her before further questioning. It's within my rights. One minute. That's all you get. <laughs> okay, we don't have much time. We need to pick a Lenny. What do you mean? She doesn't even know about the gunshot. She just wants to talk to Lenny about the car accident. But Lenny can't be Lenny because Lenny has to be Charlie just in case she wants to talk to Charlie. And Charlie can't be Charlie because Charlie has a bullet in his ear. Do you understand him in real life? We don't actually talk that much. Right, <laughs> Ernie, we need to pick again. Leave me alone with the stupid game. No, it's stupid, but we need a Lenny. Never mind, the girls will do it. Come on, girls, the ugly one's husband is Lenny. My husband is Lenny. No, Lenny is Charlie. You're playing for Glenn. Get in the circle. I don't want to play that. Just put out your fingers and we'll do the counting, all right? Ready? One, two, three. No, 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 no. Your fingers, Cookie, open your fist. I don't want to lose my earrings again. Yeah, just one or two <laughs> fingers, all right? Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Ah, it's me! Fuck, sorry, Ken. <laughs> Okay, it's all right. I'm Lenny. Ernie, go open the door. Glad to see you're not dancing again. Now, where's Mr. Leonard Gans? He's right here in this room. I'm Leonard Gans. You are? Yes. How come it took you a whole minute to think of your name? <laughs> Never write your answers. Harvard Law School. Never trust a man who doesn't know if he's here or not. Police Academy. And who are you, ma'am? I'm his wife. His wife's best friend, her, Mrs. Gans. Are you here alone, ma'am? No, I'm here with my husband, Mr. Gorman. And where is he? Mm, he must have gone home early. Not much of a party, is it? It's had its ups and downs. All right, Mr. Gans, tell us about the story in complete and full detail. Could you just give us one more moment? I ain't sir. going nowhere, no place, no time. This is it. This is where I live. Do I get what I came for? Even my whole family has to move in. I 
I've seen you someplace before. What's your name again? Lang. Lang Cooper. Have you ever been on TV? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. I'm running for the state senate. Right. I saw you do an interview on PBS. So how come you were so afraid of giving me your name? Well, you know, when you're in politics, you don't want to be involved in these sort of things. Yes, but you weren't involved in this. Unless you witnessed the accident, did you? No, no, no. My wife and I arrived late. We didn't even hear the gunshots. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> what gunshots? <laughs> I said, what gunshots? Maybe the gunshots that were fired when they chased the stolen car. Those are 12 miles over in Cary Town. You got 2020 hearing, Mr. Cooper? Yes,
team of Charlie Brock and figure out what the hell is going on here, including the possibility of him having two bullet holes in it. Now I'll give you five seconds to bring him down here, or I'll take two seconds and find him myself. Don't mess with me now. I am so close to promotion, I can smell it, and I'm not going to screw it up with this case. Do I start counting or do I start climbing up steps? It's up to you. All right, will you wait? Just wait. Just wait. Ernie, can I mean, Len? I think it's time to call Charlie and ask him down, don't you? Absolutely. Definitely. <clears throat> Charlie, we're ready for you now. Are you ready for us now? Calm down, Charlie. That's just a hysteric nerve reaction. What's wrong with him? Thinks he's gone blind. Just put some cold water on your eyes and calm down. There are two police officers who want to know the whole story. Why? Because you put out one finger, that's why. He's fine. He's coming down. The truth is, officer, we were protecting Mr. Brock because he's a dear friend of ours. But we know we are all in jeopardy if we hold back the truth. There were two gunshots here tonight. I personally did not hear them. But I share equal blame with those who did. I did not report that information. You know, I didn't hear that. <laughs> Stop helping so much, Glenn. <laughs> Nevertheless, Mr. Brock is going to tell us the full complete story, of which none of us have heard yet. About the missing help, about the disappearance of his wife, Myra, and about two gunshots, which I didn't hear. Oh, God, I'm going to spout my back! Piece of shit! Oh, hello, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Feeling all right, Charlie. <laughs> Ready to save my wife's life. 
The young man says to us in Spanish, Yo quito se dablo enchilada por queso en quito minuto. But I don't speak Spanish, and I've never seen Rosita San Romero before. I didn't know that the knife was to cut up the salad, and he was asking should they heat up the dinner now. So I aimed ah. my gun at him. My restraints and pulls my arm, and the gun goes off and hits me in the earlobe. Rosita San Romero runs downstairs and yells for Rosita and Ramona, Mamacita, Mamacita, mira el hombre, 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 bang, bang. The crazy man took a shot at him. So Rosita, Ramona, and Romero all take off and a hop and a bleeding all over Myra's new dress, and suddenly we are a car pulling up. Oh, it's a first guess. Myra grabs a bathroom and runs after Rosita, Ramona, and Romero. Otherwise, we'll have no dinner. But they take off in their Alfa Romeo. I look up, <laughs> and it's dark. And I think someone is trying to steal my beautiful Mercedes, so I take another shot at them. Myra runs down to the basement where we keep the cedar chest. She's looking for the dress she wore last year for bonds for Israel, but she can't find the light. <laughs> trips down the stairs and passes out in the dark. I come downstairs, notice that the basement door is still open, and afraid the strange young man is coming back, so I lock it, not knowing that Myra was down there. Then. I go upstairs to take some aspirin because my ear is killing me from, you know, the hole in it. But the blood from my fingers gets in my eyes, and I accidentally take more Valium instead. I hear the guests coming in, and I want to tell them to look for Myra, but suddenly I can't talk through the Valium, and, and I'm bleeding all over the white rug. So I start to write a note explaining what happened. But the note looks like gibberish, and I'm afraid they'll think it was a suicide note. And my friend Glenn Cooper was coming in. It'd be very bad for his campaign to get mixed up in a suicide. <laughs> So I tore up the note and flushed it down the toilet right as they came into my room. They're yelling at me, what happened, what happened, what happened? <laughs> then I passed out from the valley. I mean, that's the whole goddamn story. As sure as my name is Charlie Brock. Oh, honey, can we go back later to buy my crystal? I'll buy you a thousand. 